Hi, everyone. OK, I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. OK. All right. A very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you. I am Dr. Tatongkala, HOT of History Department, and I'll be the moderator for this session. Today's Dot Talk webinar is some um, commercial activities involving tribal areas in India. It is organized by Think India Tribal Rights Forum under Project Eglavia in collaboration with the Department of History and Department of English, Tetsu College. We are indeed really grateful to the organizers for providing such opportunities where we can all come together and focus on supporting environmental condition for innovations in tribal areas and most importantly the need for tribal entrepreneurship we'll be hearing more about it from our speaker and i'm really and i'm sure we will ha be having an impactful and meaningful session our speaker today is pavia sani she has worked with aor sc uh, Acharna Patak Dev in cases like Sapi Mala case, Kucharat Riots case. She also organized sessions with various professionals from different fields like historians, IS officers, fashion designers, senior advocates, and research scholars. She was also the third winner of policy making competition organized by Think India on rejuvenation of rivers. She also worked as internship coordinator for policy making and tribal fashion, and also won certificate of merit for one of the best mediator in international mediation competition. She is working with uh, Think India, Himachal Pradesh, Tribal Rights Forum, and AINA. Welcome, Pavia, and we are really excited to hear from you. Now, before I give time to the speaker, I want to remind our participants here that. We'll have a, a question and answer time I, uh, after the end of the presentation by our speaker. So if you have any questions, please uh, use the chat box, post your questions in the chat box. I'll take it up after the end of the um, presentation by our speaker. Or if you want, you can even unmute your mic and ask questions at the end. So without uh, taking up much time, I would now uh, give the time to Pavia. So, Pavia, you can please take your time. Yeah. Uh, am I audible to all of yeah. you? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for the kind introduction. And I'm really obliged to, you know, speak in front of the people who are right now present in the history and English field. So, my name is Bhavya, and right now I'm working with the Tribal Rights Forum. Um, the topic for today's discussion it, it is related to tribal entrepreneurship basically so first before moving towards the topic directly we'll be taking up few facts about the tribal population in our country and just various uh, I, I want to show am i okay so just tell me if you can see the screen here right now. Um, yes, yes, we can see the screen. OK, thank you. So just a few facts before moving towards the main topic. So you know, if we talk about tribal population in our country, it constitutes about 8.61% of the total population of our country. So, you know, uh, maximum almost 90% of the tribal population lives in the rural areas and just 10% in urban areas, that was just because they were uh, either forcefully, you know, displaced from the rural areas due to the development projects or they were willingly living there, a uh, few in the urban areas. So one third is uh, one third of the Jharkhand population is tribal. It's, it's just a fact. And the Bastar district of Chhattisgarh basically it has the largest number of scheduled tribes in the country. So we have to see that there is a difference between scheduled tribe and just tribes. 
so if we talk about scheduled tribes right now it's more than 6 uh, it's i think more than 800 but scheduled tribes scheduled tribes basically scheduled tribes it's the concept it's an idea in the constitution of our country so if we talk about scheduled tribes that uh, there are uh, there are um, i think 550 distinct tribes and under the scheduled tribe book uh, i can excuse me uh, can you please yeah. enlarge your screen yes sure i think I think it's fine right now. Uh, no, actually, okay. there's this uh, start slide show button. If you can just click that, the slides will be on screen, uh, full screen. Okay, it'll go full screen. So it'll uh, make it yes. easier to see. Yes. Uh, is actually can you can you see it right now in the full view? Uh, it's not in full view. Uh, on your top, see on your screen, no, you can actually, see this. Yes, yeah. I have already done it in my screen. I can see the full view actually. Oh, okay, okay. No, for us, it's still the window view. But, but, okay. but, but, all right, all right. It's fine. You can just go ahead. No issues. Okay, Thank okay. You. Actually, there was a bug. I don't know. Actually, I tried it before as well. So it was not visible in the in the presentation, the full screen. But I am able to see the full screen. So I have already done this uh, this uh, full screen view. So I don't know what's what's the condition. What is the problem? I don't know exactly. So um, okay. So if we talk about the constitution, so basically scheduled tribes are in the constitution. Those areas which are uh, which we consider as backward or primitive or you know economically the tribes which are very much behind. the uh, normal people the majority of the people or majority of the other tribes there are also vulnerable tribes uh, uh, the concept of vulnerable tribes also that in the constitution it has another kind of a special treatment apart from the scheduled tribe areas so basically scheduled tribes they are not they are not given the title based on particular tribe basically it, uh, it the concept is that the government uh through parliament or the president through uh, any resolution basically they can declare any area particular area scheduled area so the people the tribes living in the scheduled areas they are called scheduled tribes so basically the constitution if we see the idea is of the scheduled area a scheduled tribe is the people who are living in that scheduled area so basically the president uh, generally they do it with the consultation of the governor of the particular state so you know they can increase enlarge or decrease the area of the scheduled tribes they can exclude any tribe from any area from the scheduled areas they can include any area to the scheduled area so basically they've been given certain reservations uh, it's nagaland you know you you might have come across these things so Uh, if we see the reservation part and the, the uh, opportunities which the reservations which the government give to the scheduled areas that is uh, in my view i don't think the scheduled tribe people could take the benefit of that thing uh, in its fullest that, that that is the point i can see where where i've studied in the university in the schools you know there or uh, if you have 60 seats of scheduled tribe people only 10 will come under the scheduled tribe quota so in the scheduled caste there there are a lot of people you know seats uh, there you know in a scheduled caste there is there they themselves have a competition regarding that seat there are so many castes in the scheduled caste and they know they know their reservation rights in their particular university in a particular college they are able to take the benefit but i see a lag in the scheduled tribes so that uh, maybe the the fault in the part of the government throughout these years so uh, let's not get into that uh, it was just uh, general information so uh, if we talk about article 244 it talks about fifth schedule basically there are 10 states under fifth schedule and in these 10 states there are scheduled areas described by the a uh, uh, president or the parliament and the sixth schedule it's under article 244 clause 2 and uh, article 275 clause 
don't need to go into the details basically it talks about the areas they define the areas as this this particular area is schedule area and as so in this sixth schedule this is basically for these four states that is assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram they have been given under under the sixth schedule the title of the you know they have a certain slight uh, difference uh, in the treatment as uh, with respect to the fifth schedule areas so if we see in the sixth schedule so the thing here is they have these states have the autonomous district bodies so basically the there are autonomous districts which the governor in which the president in consultation with the governor the governor they decide that okay this will be the area this will be the autonomous district and they have the regions they have their uh, self governing bodies controlling the areas wholly by the tribes uh, in in the practical scenario i don't know exactly what is going on practically because there is a there is very few you know almost none, no information regarding the regarding the governance of these areas so there is a very few information that we see in respect of the northeastern areas so you know usually when you search on the internet you search on videos you you'll get the cliche and the general idea about the northeastern people that is what the forum is doing actually you know we want to break these narratives regarding uh, regarding the northeastern tribes or the tribes all over in, in general in india so basically people have this uh, concept that uh, tribes in general they are primitive because if we see in the constitution itself you know they declare uh, an area schedule area based on the primitiveness the shyness the geographical isolation of the area you know the backwardness basically so i don't consider it a very fine uh, area or very very fine categories where we can say that okay if a particular tribe a particular people living in the particular area they have these characteristics then you can describe them as uh, you can make them as schedule tribes so i think it's a very narrow and a very negative form you can you can do to the tribes you can consider them in the way so during my research in the tribal areas uh, whether it's culture whether it's the constituent assembly debates whether it is the uh, constitution itself the constitution itself doesn't describe tribes it doesn't give any criteria as to what uh, what should be the tribes which should fall under the category of schedule tribes so it's it's basically one of the committee in 19 i think 1954 it was formed local committee it has the report and it states these five points so basically they follow these five points but it is it is not formally written anywhere so we can definitely change it it's not about any amendment to the constitution it's just the amendment to the minds of people so we don't have to shift we don't have to amend we don't have to go through the lengthy procedures of amendments in the parliament we can just change this view by you know broadening the scope you know just broadening the uh, the scope the area uh, the the light in which we see the tribes of our country so when i was researching about the northeastern tribes their culture you know they are so rich You, you people are part of that, and I was so fascinated about all the uh, the diversity, the diverse culture, the richness. You know, if if in anywhere in the country I could see that people are connected to the roots of their culture, to the tradition, I can say it's the northeastern states. You know, I am living in Himachal right now, and uh, Himachal is uh, the people here. You know, uh, we are traditionally connected to the culture here. you know we have a little bit different culture uh, uh, when we see as uh, as in general of the country so we have our own deities we have our own ishta devata we you know we uh, we 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 go for rallies uh, for the deities if we construct any house if we you know if we make a house for ourselves and we do not just go there and start living we invite our dt first week we will conduct a whole rally uh, through the uh, through the uh, through, through a ground and towards the uh, colonies and all over the place and we and we welcome the dt and then the dt uh, 
comes and sits in the place and then we go and live so uh, you know we have diversity all around the country but if we see certain states if we see the so called modern areas where we have modernized where we have developed the western ideas of development i see a clear cut disintegration of people from their roots so that is what i'm afraid of uh, when i talk when i you know when i go deep into the development parts of the northeastern states the i'll talk i'll go uh, went in, i'll i'll go into this later uh, at the end of the uh, end of my discussion i have one idea you can say regarding the development or in enterprises entrepreneurs of the northeastern states i have few ideas where where you can start i have one or two schemes regarding the uh, which the government of india has for the enterprises uh, for the first generation entrepreneurs of the northeastern states so we'll uh, get we'll dig deep into the into this part later but that is what i see that the uh, if we see the traditions if we see that if there is any particular a uh, population of any particular community who who is still connected with their roots that is the north eastern state and the so called modernized and the developed world they have just totally disregarded all the traditional ways of their living and they just blindly accepted the western culture so you can clearly see the um, the works they are doing uh, in professional field in profession in the profession area as well as the personal area you can clearly see that uh, how uh, you know they are like kati patang <laughs> they have you know when aap manje se aapki patang judi nahi hoti hai and you just fly and one day you will fall and there is no scope that you can again fly back so that is where we are we are flying without any strings attached to our roots so that is the that is the that will be the main point throughout my discussion the traditions and the enterprises the mixture of that so these are just 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 the general facts about the uh, the in the constitution the percentage of tribes living in the country so this is the the tribes living those who were there in the ramayana period valmiki belonged to this kira tribe kasi garo bhil kol gon miri these the few tribes are still as it is with these names only and few have changed but they are still there but they have changed the ways of living they have changed the names okay so in the mahabharata period we have these tribes andhra abhisara and this khasa nishad nishad had uh, relevance in both mahabharat and ramayana periods so these were just few facts uh, okay if we i'm just uh, uh, stopping this right now okay okay so i don't have a, a real press ppt made because this topic was given to me uh, really uh, in a short term so i couldn't prepare the ppt exactly what i wanted to convey so i'll try to do it uh, just by uh, you know just by saying it okay so we have seen the facts we have seen the constitution the makeup regarding the tribes the scheduled tribes when we see north east particularly north east we have seven sisters uh, if we go by and read the future of north east the world is looking forward to the north east in the uh, you know in a, a big uh, professional hub a big um, industrial hub you know the the uh, the natural resources which you people have which you have conserved over these years uh, throughout your life throughout your generations so this is one this is one way that they are looking forward to exploit the natural resources or use the natural resources the other thing is your heritage your ways of living your ways of your traditions your culture your art they are looking forward to that 
in uh, in manipur yes in manipur i think yes uh ha huh. yeah, uh, not not in manipur but shillong shillong meghalaya so uh, i've seen that uh, the area is basically they are uh, <clears throat> full uh, they work towards the organic farming they they have a lot of uh, the, all the farmers they work there with the uh, you know they don't use fertilizers they don't use the modern techniques of agriculture they have their organic ways of doing agriculture and that is the strength of the area so if we see that what you know we have agriculture if we have your heritage your forest produce which which people use in general the resources which you have the natural beauty the spot of tourism that could north east could become a tourist spot in future years uh, and all the other you know, there is when i was going through the north eastern uh, entrepreneurs the people the entrepreneurs which you have produced in the in sem sisters uh, one thing i one thing i just felt common in all these areas that they were just you know marketing the ideas they were marketing your business ideas they just they were doing that so there are ideas there are thousands and lakhs of ideas which are flowing in the north eastern people that we know that due to lack of connectivity through roads railway airport or through the Uh, internet connectivity the technological restraints uh, people are not well equipped with the technology you know the uh, the marketing obviously in the in the whole sense the marketing how you market your products how you you know uh, you have great ideas but you know what the patent laws say that people have great ideas in their minds but the patent will only protect the expression of that idea so idea could be same but the ways of expressing it that the law protects so you know the the ways of expressing is the key that is what we call as marketing so i know uh, you guys must, must be working on the marketing skills as well but yes there is the problem of connectivity that is the main point the whole india has converted to the digital we we use phones we we have uh, jio everywhere people uh, 80 million people use jio uh, we have smartphones but there is still lack of connectivity in the northeast you know like we just as we have made the north eastern state the, the whole seven sisters just a remote area i don't know why it's it's such a beautiful place this there's, there's so much potential in the north eastern people they have so much to show to the world but uh, i i i won't go into the politics but yes the forum right now we are working in the field of of this only we have project projects going on to conserve the cultural identity to conserve the heritage uh, the traditions the art of the tribes in general and in my mind uh, there is a few thing there is a uh, there are a few things that i want to focus on the north eastern area separately okay so we'll be working on those parts we have shabri ki kutia that Uh, we take up one tribe at a time, and we describe in brief what what is about so special about these tribes and the facts. It's a, just for forty to fifty words, just just a small poster uh, regarding every tribe. Every uh, tribe, every day we uh, we release a trivia in the Shabri ki kutia, and uh, you know if we go by the page of the tribal forum Instagram handle, you'll see the page is so informative. every every uh, pod, podcast every video every uh, trivia you know vanwasiyon ke bol we we work on the tribal languages so everything if you if you scroll and if you just read you get a lot to learn about the tribal culture about the tribal people in our country so we want to make it uh, the uh, the whole forum 
to work towards the development uh, to the development of the tribes in general and that is what we want that we want the minds of the people to get broadened and not to restrict that uh, okay you have a primitive ways of living uh, you know the agriculture if you talk about in agriculture as a whole you have the key to the uh, you know to the new modern ways of agriculture we have seen uh, the modern the western ways of agriculture using a lot of fertilizers we have used a lot of genetically modified seeds in our uh, agriculture if we see punjab up uh, uttar pradesh haryana punjab you know the lands are spoiled due to the overuse of agriculture and the genetically modified seeds which we use so you know that causes health issues as well but the main apart from the health issues which we which we face the major impact is on the soil you know uh, even the who says that if if your soil doesn't have 2% of the uh, 2% of the uh, organic content organic content is the uh, the green part i mean you ha- you must have the uh, uh, leaves the green manure and the manure in general the cow dung etc Uh, you must have worms in your uh, in your soil you know they fertile they help in fertilizing fertilizing the soil so you know we have in india in general 0.02% of the organic content due to the overuse of the fertilizers so you know we uh, we cannot say the soil as soil to say to declare a soil as a soil it must have it it must have has a 2% organic content in it and we are less than zero so you know we have converted all our fertile alluvial soil into just sand uh, we are facing droughts we are facing harsh floods the climatic changes farmer suicide um you know all that was happening going on everywhere we started with the green revolution but you know the problem with people is we start but we don't know where to start so there in the north east we can see the difference you guys know where to start and where to stop and where to just gather around all all your all your dump and you know just pack it in a bag and uh, know what to do next so uh, if we blindly follow i have seen in my life if i blindly follow the morning western ideas you you are just a bull going around everywhere and hitting everybody so you know that that is the heritage you can use as uh, you know the agriculture as the as your uh, as your new business model uh, you know the organic products the demand of organic products has increased so much in our own country plus in the western countries you know there are people right now where i'm living they are they are willing to give uh, you know t- t- uh, thrice the price of what they are right now buying i i myself have uh, bought the fruits uh, which you know i am really fond of fruits mangoes and uh, lychee and uh, strawberries and it's 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 a so uh, uh you know I, we have given thrice the price for the organic products just because we are aware that these fertilizer based uh, fruits they are going to give us nothing so you know people are ready they are willing to they are standing on a threshold they just need a push they don't get the authentic organic product and the northeast could become one of the uh, you know future Uh, agro businesses you know organic agro businesses uh, or any term which you which which you love to give to the to the enterprise you can work the problem is just in the marketing the marketing skills you know uh, regarding the marketing uh, i can just i have just one idea regarding the marketing area that uh, obviously we need connectivity or oh, that that's the truth we need technology that's the truth that's that's uh, that's a fact we need it uh, government is trying to connect 
the northeastern states to the uh, to the uh, to the to other states of the region through rails through roads through express ways i have uh, i've come across certain projects certain mega projects which which is under the bharat mala scheme or the bharat mala project so one is the brahmaputra river bridge it's a 20 km bridge it's a four lane and uh, it will it will connect uh, assam and meghalaya the other is uh, i think it's a uh, jiribam se impal tak ka project it's uh, it, it was uh, it's a basically it's a bridge i i think you guys must have uh, might have known this thing it's a bridge and it once it it is completed it will be the tallest uh, tallest uh, rider railway project in the country so i think it's uh, the height is twice the height of qutub minar that's what they say okay the other project is the kohima infal it's a four way express uh, express project infal jiribam four lay it's also, it's also a express project express way project so we have uh, guwahati metro rail it's, it's under just the discussion it has not uh, worked people have not uh, worked under the uh, in the ground areas as well so you know there are so much project the main is with brahmaputra express express way uh, basically it's uh, it's in arunachal pradesh actually they are focusing on the north east right now because north eastern states they are connected to the south east asia they are connected to bangladesh myanmar china the these all these north east uh, the south south eastern uh, south east asia basically so the government is looking forward towards the north east as the hub to do business in these countries so that's why uh, the uh, they direly want the north east to be well connected with roads airports uh, railway projects the, due to the covid situation the uh, problems hui hongi there might be uh, great problems regarding the uh, the ongoing projects but yes they are willing to do it due to the security issues as well in arunachal pradesh they are you know they are connecting this brahmaputra express express through the brahmaputra express way it's it's 890 km four lane express way and it will connect the in west the dhubri to the east sadia it's uh, i think it's uh, if it's arunachal pradesh like this uh, uh, dhubri is in the west and sadia it's here so it's a big line uh, you know it, it connects between 3 to 4 major uh, cities in between so all the strategic you know the government is looking towards building it as a as a business hub as well and for strengthening the security of our country as well throughout all the borders the main problem is china obviously so arunachal pradesh assam uh, these sikkim these are the areas where we need a uh, frontier the government is really working to improve the roads for the uh, for the ammunition for the security purposes to run smoothly so uh, you you guys don't have to worry about it that the connectivity thing will be done like, for sure is bar they won't they won't be lagging they won't uh, you know just lag the project to 30 or 40 years after they the the previous governments have made the projects and they just forget about it. um it's, it's okay so that's a political thing but yes the through these ways the connectivity will definitely be done and the technological aspects if we talk about the uh, the technical things the uh, uh, the the programs which the government will run in future i think they might be doing it right now there is one um one scheme which i want to share with you this uh let me let me just share the tab okay i have to yes uh okay so you might be able to see this right the northeast entrepreneurs development uh, i think it's visible right the screen is visible yes yes okay okay thank you so much 
Okay, so it's it's a development program. Uh, so basically, it's a scheme for the small enterprises. So it's a first generation thing. If in the northeast area, so entrepreneurs in the northeast, if we see that the new project in micro and small enterprises expansion and modernization of existing units. So it's for the first generation entrepreneurs that it's right now. It's it's written here. So if you are a first gen, you want to open up your business, you know you can take help from this thing. Basically, what they are providing is the term loan up to maximum seventy five percent of the project cost. So it's really helpful. You, you you can get easily loan for that, and the condition is the you have to contribute at least twenty five percent of the project's cost. So from your side, it's twenty five percent contribution, and the government will help you for the other seventy five percent. So I think it's a, it's a really good thing. The eligibility criteria is the first generation entrepreneurs, exist existing entrepreneurs, proprietary and partnership concerns and companies. You know, uh, this is almost for everybody. It's for everybody. So how do you apply? This is the this is the form. You can fill it. You can you can give the details, etc. So it's a page of it's a Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region. So you know they are very keen to develop the north east. Almost the whole world is looking towards the north north east for their heritage, especially. Okay, so this was the one thing. The other is the Vandhan Yojana. So what's about it is it's it's basically a scheme under the mechanism for marketing. Uh, this one mechanism for marketing of minor forest produce MFP. Through minimum support price, you minimum support price. If you don't know, I'll tell you uh, after this. And development of value chain of MFP. So basically, what the government is doing right now, and this minimum support price is that the government directly buys from the farmer the produce. So basically, in UP and the other states of the of the country, they take few. Uh, they have you know a list of few crops. uh one is uh, they take uh, wheat they take millets they take paddy they take uh, bajra maize there are this this a long list of the crops which the government buys directly from the farmers um and you know why it is called minimum support price is the government fixes the rate suppose per quintal the rate the government fixes 1700 rupees per quintal so wherever in the country the farmer will go to to the centers they have the they have the mandis where they store all the all the crops so they will definitely get 1700 rupees so uh, if in the if in the private mandis and if in the market uh, the price is 1000 rupees per quintal the government is offering 1700 so there is a profit of 700 rupees so that this is this is the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the project this is the scheme which the government has offered since years you know to boost to to help the farmers so basically uh, the government buys i think 9 to 10% of the produce of the total produce of the country so for the uh, for the tribes basically what they have come up with the minor forest produce so you know the minor minor forest produce uh, the uh, the leaves i think uh you have so much you take small certain things from the from the forest directly and you sell it i think yeah they they have written that 40 to 60% of the tribal annual earning is from basically the mfp the more, uh, the minor forest produce so when the tribal people they have uh, they have 40 to 60% of their annual earning from mfps so government has decided to open the minimum support price for these marketing of for the marketing of the minor forest produce so basically they take this is the this is the this is what they do they identify uh, locations and mfps uh, they see that okay these are the forests where the uh, where the tribal people take uh, the uh, the produce the minor produce so basically leaves bark of the trees some herbs shrubs and etc et so uh, the next thing they identify the tribal gatherers then they gather the minor forest pr uh, products and then they what they do that they 
do the marketing of that of that produce so in the marketing if you give them um you know uh, you the the tribal people what help they need is that they can do wonders actually but due to lack of money due to lack of economic infrastructure for them they lack they you know they cannot go for the marketing things because it needs money for the uh, for to gather the product you know it needs a man part that they can do that they are still now they are doing but for the marketing areas you need money you need support you need sufficient training for that and that's what we have we have never done any work in that area so the government has come up with this uh, this this incredible scheme uh, you know if uh, this model works that will be really helpful for the tribal people so you know the an initiative targeting livelihood generation for tribal gatherers and transforming them them into entrepreneurs so what they are what they will be doing that they will be uh, establishing bandhan vikas kendra clusters so in those clusters uh the those clusters will constitute 15 tribal self help help groups or the vandhan kendras and what they will be do, doing that they will be collecting all the minor forest produce in in those uh, in those kendras or the self help groups and what they will be doing they will be uh, marketing they will be uh, what see form of 20 member self help groups training value addition equipment storage and logistics branding and marketing this is what the government is supposed to do in this particular area so this is a 100% central government funded with trifid trifid is a it's a it's basically it established in 1987 it's a uh, organization we can say that under the government who is working uh, for the marketing of the tribal products basically either they do so many things but basically the marketing is what they do so providing 15 lakh for each 300 member vandhan kendra clusters so this is the whole model you can go and see the website this is all the steps for the to uh, for the to incorporate everything to make basically the tribal people the entrepreneurs so government will be helping in that case uh, we'll see that uh, you know it has not taken full shape yet but we are hoping that this will this will go by and work will give fruitful results okay so if we go by and talk about tourism so northeast is known for the natural beauty obviously and natural beauty because of the people living in the northeastern areas so the uh, one thing which was in my mind was that the this modernization and this western ideas of development basically what they do is they take away your uh, traditional ways of doing business and replace it by saying that you have primitive ideas they replace it and they give you their own ideas so not in 100% cases they are correct but you can use the technology you can use the modern technology that that is what you can use the tools basically to uh, to promote your ways of doing business so what northeast in general can do in the tourism area that you guys have to preserve your forests right what they are, what you are doing right now you have to pr- protect your integrity while you are developing northeast can give their own model for a sustainable development not just developing uh, you know creating the concrete jungles but side preserving the forests preserving their own traditions and being modern side by side being modern means you can use their technologies you can use all the professional things which the marketing skills the uh, all these uh, technologies smartphones and everything you can use them and you can popularize your traditions your handicrafts your ways of uh, your 
basically your heritage you can make these technologies uh, as a tool to market your tradition so you know it will be a whole new example to be set before the world entire world not just the country but the entire world because north east is right now untouched so um, the thing when we talk about tourism is that people will come in lakhs and uh, they will uh, they will just you know um, maybe uh, i don't know exactly the term but yes um, you have to preserve your integrity you have to preserve your you know just not get swayed away by the modern techniques so you can basically market your ways of agriculture your products like one there was one one entrepreneur she, uh, she's a woman and um, the kiwis i think the farmers who were producing kiwis so they were facing huge losses because of the fall in demand maybe so what she did is she took all the produce and she produced wine through the local te- uh, techniques of fermenting so right now she owns her own brand uh, it's a big brand i think you you might be knowing in the north eastern areas but you know to make all these initiatives all these uh, all these ideas a global thing you need technology for that and government is supporting and government will do uh, I, we are hoping then government will definitely do it so what as a northeastern you have to preserve is your own culture you have to market your own ideas like uh, the the spices the herbs which you people produce in the northeast you can market that through various online portals you can make your own app you can make available these items to the world so in the uh, you, you know you can go you can work out in any mnc you can learn the marketing skills you can come back to your own state and let the people there know about these marketing skills the technology if we just exclude the government for uh, for just one minute if everything what has happened in the northeast is done by the people living there because of their independence because of their independence of uh, you know for livelihood for everything which they have done for their own country, for their own for the country and for for the state as well you know uh, they have never depend they have never in any case were dependent upon the state government or the central government so that is what i want the northeasterns to preserve you have you can you cannot just leave you should not basically just leave uh, your integrity you know if suppose next uh, if suppose today you have all the connectivity internet roads railway suppose you have everything right now with you so after 10 years from now the next generation they will definitely get influenced by the modern ways and uh, honestly if i tell the modern ways of living that is very superficial so uh, you know when you go and work in a modern in a totally westernized area you see there is a lot of a uh, lot of mis happening going on inside the lives of the people the mental issues they are not happy you know you can see the developed model right now in the west as well they have money all right they have big buildings they have beautiful uh, cities living where they are living but the health issues the mental anxiety level is so high that 70% of the people living there are under one or the other medical condition so getting an appointment of a doctor they have to wait for 6 months or 7 months in line so that is what the condition is right now so in in our country we cannot just uh, you know blindly follow the these western ideas if we see in certain states of our own country what they have done to the, themselves just by blindly following the western ideas 
so that is what uh, my view of your uh, of the north eastern uh, development you can produce your own you can have your own model and show it to the world that uh, you know when you connect to your roots you can build in um, in reality basically a developed model so development is not just building cute structures around you for protecting you but you know a, a growth a level of maturity in people themselves you must be happier you must be more uh, happy you must be more uh, uh, you know satisfied inside you that okay you have done so much and you are right now you have done everything what you have uh, what you might have done uh, for you as well as for your state and the country so uh, you know just just the blind race that is not what the north east is and that is what i want to tell that please don't leave this particular idea don't leave this particular uh, strength of yours you have millions and millions of things which you can do to with your tradition you can modernize it you can show it to the world uh, you know you can produce a whole new different model of development and that is what that is what the north east must do because it's untouched it's untouched by the modernized world so to my side uh, i think that's it uh, i've tried my best to give you the uh, the models the marketing ways you see for the marketing ways you need to work in a modernized way so in a modernized way as in if you market suppose you have a you have a mobile phone and you have uh, okay not mobile phone uh, through bamboo uh, you can make uh, you have made a mobile stand okay so for that mobile stand just to sell that mobile stand you can use a very beautiful maybe uh, a samsung or an apple phone you can uh you can create uh, such a beautiful video uh, or you know basically while marketing your products you have to go into the modern ways because that's what people like if you go by traditional ways of marketing uh, you we won't be successful in my view so if you want to market you have to go deep into the modern ways of marketing they like the minimalistic concept they like uh you know they like this uh, these uh, heavy expensive phones around themselves I- even if the the mobile case is of uh, 100 rupees worth you have to advertise it as it it's it's a it's a 1000 dollar thing so you know that way of i, I don't know if i could uh, make a video for you in future and show it as what i am and saying um when uh, even if in the advertisements if you if you see pepsi and everything they popularize their 30 rupees drink as it as if that uh, if you don't drink it you basically are backward so this concept to attach your product to the status of the people that's that's a one way of marketing so if a particular section of the people they don't have your product they are basically you know somewhere lagging behind so you connect your product to the social status of people you connect your product to the modern world you connect you present your uh, traditional ideas in a modern way so that people could connect uh, right now with them so basically there is one in terms of uh, tribal fashion which i am coordinating right now is so basically i'm taking up the designs the the costumes basically the clothes which have modern and the tribal theme in it and the tribal uh, the the clothes the design the color they will be directly taking from the tribe itself so you know combination will work in a global market so you can work in a totally traditional way in your own area in your uh, in in regions uh, uh, just across uh, just uh, side 
ओके बेसिकली फॉर द टोटली ट्रेडिशनल वेज इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट इट विल नॉट वर्क फॉर गोइंग इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट और इवन अक्रॉस द कंट्री यू हैव टू कनेक्ट योर योर यू हैव टू मेक अ ब्रांड नेम अ फैंसी ब्रांड नेम विद अ क्लासिक थीम विद इट विद अ टैग लाइन विद इट द प्रोडक्ट मस्ट लुक क्लासी the uh, the the ways of marketing must be classy so that people can attach to your traditional ways to the modern uh, to the modern life and they can just uh, buy those products so uh, that's 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 it from my side um if there is any question regarding okay pavyan thank you so much for your informative uh, presentation Okay, now uh, we will have a question and answer round or time. If the participants have any questions, you can please uh, post your questions in the chat box, or you can unmute your mic and you can ask your questions as well. Okay. Uh, while we wait for the participants to uh, post the questions, uh, Bhavya, just uh, one query. uh like you know you guys have been working so closely with the tribals you know as a tribal rights forum so does your forum also provide or give trainings to the tribal groups especially with regard to how to promote the tribal items or products right now actually we just started in september so these ideas are in our minds and will definitely go offline and will be working with the tribes and will be giving the ideas of how to market the product how to you know how to uh, make your product a global brand so will be definitely will be doing this in future and if you can join us if you want to join us you can definitely do so and uh, so with directly we basically we want directly a connection with the tribal people we directly want to work with them so we need such a connection so if you can also help us that would be a great thing for us okay thank you uh we have a question here in the chat box it says does your forum have any ongoing projects in north east no not exactly in the north east basically we are right now just online we are doing everything online we have we have worked on tribal policies we have worked on how to improve tribal laws uh, how to improve the infrastructure there according to their lives according to their traditions and not just completely westernizing them so we are working towards that that's what i can tell you not the ongoing on offline projects right now okay does anyone have any other questions okay just one last uh, question from my end like you know according to you like how does this tribal women they contribute in conserving our biodiversity you have been talking about conserving our biodiversity and all this so what is the role of this uh, tribal women what role does they play in contributing uh, in conserving our biodiversity so basically if we talk about tribes so in general tribes basically the women in every sphere as in but in the tribal areas they you know the craft the uh, the agri the ways of agriculture there is one tribe who doesn't know their land basically what they do is they just uh, you know they just don't know the lands they just uh, uh, with a stick they they uh, just uh, create a hole in the soil and they just throw towards the sea and they cover it so and they leave the the land as it is so you know in that kind of uh, agriculture that is done mostly by the women in that area so 
if we see agricultural areas if we see the handicrafts the crafts the women is playing the most important role in that and if we see the tribes i have seen mostly the women uh, actually they are working very hard in preserving they, they have worked very hard in preserving their handicraft and their culture so that is that is what uh, that is one more thing which we are working right now on we are making uh, a policy which is focused on the tribal women how you can develop uh, how you can basically create a feminine model basically you, we talk very much about the feminist uh, the feminist idea the equality between genders but tribes they already have it in the northeast i think there is one uh, one area where there is um, where the head where the head of the family is women and the boy comes and uh, marry and comes to the house of the mother in law so uh, the reason could be anything the war at that time but yes the women has played a crucial role right now and they will still be doing it in the future and we are here to promote that as well we are working on a policy of such kind okay we have uh, one question here in the chat box uh, when it's inevitable to adopt modern ways for marketing along with it will develop larger modern infrastructure necessary for certain industries example tourism how to preserve our traditional culture and practices when confronted by powerful modern technologies if you can please answer yes, yes. basically that's, that's what i was trying to say in my whole uh, in my whole presentation so basically if you see any area which uh, you know which depends totally upon tourism people living there are so much dependent on the people who come so in the pandemic times so when people could not visit the places they faced huge financial losses just because they were totally dependent on the people who were who were coming for just tourist tourism purposes so what you can do is uh, suppose you don't have to create markets as it is who are selling who are selling you know the uh, the products of the modern the modern products basically the shirts and t-shirts and the goggles and everything you have your own tradition you have your own clothes and the craft and everything you can create more you know i i know you have much more right now what is what is visible is so you know basically your own tradition your own ideas could be the attraction so what you can do is suppose you you have a hectare land where you produce organic vegetables so you know you can market your your uh, your organic products online and you can make that or uh, your own one hectare land a, a place for tourism you can invite people you can you know you can give a model like you can invite people okay you are buying our product so you are welcome you are you are we welcome you to visit our place where we grow these things we'll be giving you ideas about how to grow vegetables organically and you know everything you you know you through your business model you create a uh, tourism not just because you have natural beauty but because you have brilliant uh, traditions because you have brilliant ideas and basically what is your model is organic vegetable that is what uh, the northeasters are doing you are producing organic vegetables that that is the fact and you can you just have to you know make that model marketed that model globalized and people will come from different countries to visit your farm so that could be just a, a one example where you know you you are uh, the modernizing way in the sense is you don't stop using your organic ways of cultivating and just going on producing the fertilized crops so that is the way uh, that is what i was questioning that don't accept their ways of working and their ways of livelihood accept you know just uh, grow big your own traditions just grow make your own uh, ways of doing business big a big business so that was one model you can create your handicrafts as in uh, black pottery 
for example if we take so you know you can make a beautiful building out of that thousands of workers must be working there for example suppose you know you can uh, just make that particular building a tourist spot you can create a whole market where you'll be selling a uh, different kinds of wine a wine market maybe uh, a wine uh, you, you know that market can go all the way around the country around the world and selling your products so you know that's why you are using the technology and not get affected by the modern ways of livelihood so that that's one thing which i can suggest okay thank you bavya uh is i think there are no further questions here so uh yeah now i would like to give time to uh, dr rosy tap for the word of thanks rosy please take your time uh good afternoon everyone uh i'm just going to keep my camera off because i'm having a shaky network at the moment but i think i would like to take this time to uh, thank Uh, individuals here uh, so i am dr rodi that the hod of english so i on behalf of the department of english and history uh, would like to take this time and thank think the india tribal uh, right forums and their the project at lavia for this collaborative opportunity given to us and even to the college in general so at that so our primary focus is uh, to uh, prioritize the growth of every individual in terms of tribal and indigenous issues and thereby uh, also identifying identifying ourselves uh, i think my network is not uh, very stable right now we might be having a very low volume uh, might be having some difficulty hearing me out so i'm just going to make this very uh, short uh, so I thank the, the webinar speaker Ms Bhavya Saini for enlightening us with your knowledge and I think today's webinar is full of knowledge and interesting things we get to learn a lot and you have given us a uh, quite a good insight of what can be done right in a uh, place that we are living in right now and if uh, this topic has I think it has revealed some interesting facts as well so thank you Ms a uh, bhavya signing for this wonderful session uh right so uh in addition i thank all the attendees for being patient and having this wonderful session with us we appreciate you being here so thank you so much for being here and uh, uh we look forward to have this sort of talk again in the future thank you everyone Uh, I'm going to hand over the time to Miss uh, Tatung now. Uh, Tatung, can you please take over the time? I think my network is fluctuating. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Rosie. So, uh, thanks to all the participants, to Pavia for the talk, and also the uh, the forum, uh, Tribal Rights Forum, and all of you and all the participants. So, with that, uh, we'll end our session here. uh we look forward to having more sessions in the future thank you thank you so much thank you